Welcome to another Excel Athlete Fitness video. What we're going to look at today is a dynamic chart that has controls that allow you to expand and contract the range and also to change uh, whereabouts the data begins and where it ends. So here we are looking at a table. It's got 36 months worth of body weight averages. So as you can see, January 2010 through December 2012, an average body weight. So what we need to do to start this process off is create a named range by selecting all of the months and I'm just going to write in here months. I'm going to use that name range in a drop down box. Clicking data, data validation and here I'm going to type months. There we go. That now becomes available. You will notice that it is formatted incorrectly. As you can see here, there's a number 40,269. If you've seen this number before and you don't know why it's like that, it's because that's the number of days since the turn of the century uh, 1900. So the turn of the 20th century. That's how Excel calculates dates. So if I just go Control 1, that brings up the format window. I'm going to choose Custom. And if I scroll down, I should be able to find a month and year option. There it is. Great. That should be months. So I'm just going to write a number in here for now. That way we can get the graph started and we can adjust that later. So what I've chosen at the, at the moment is two input variables into a graph. The first one specifies when the data begins. And the second one specifies how many data points are going to show on the graph. I actually can't do much with the start date at the moment. I need to get a number because that number will help control the dynamic range that we're about to create. So I'm going to use a function called match. What match does is it finds whereabouts in a list a particular value is. So I'm going to look up this value here in that list using an exact match and that's going to tell me that it's the fourth item on the list so if I change that it changes so that's that's now useful to us in the dynamic range what we need to create and this is a little bit tricky it's using the offset function in the name manager when you use the offset function in a spreadsheet it has three variables an anchor point a number of rows and a number of columns and what it does is it simply starts from the anchor point, goes down how many rows you specify, and across how many columns you specify. When you use it in a dynamic range, it has five variables. And certainly when you start getting uh, a lot of variables in a formula, it becomes a little bit of a challenge to get your head around. So go into the define name section, and I'm going to call this dynamic weight. And down in the refers to box, I'm going to type equals offset. I usually use the column heading as my anchor point. I want to know, I want to tell the computer how many rows before the data begins. To do so, I'm going to use the variable that we just created, the start number. I also have to specify how many columns should I move across to the right from the anchor point. The answer is zero because the data is directly below. The last two variables are the same, rows and columns, but this time what it's asking for is how big is the range that we want to chart. That's how big it is, the value in E3, and it is one column wide. 
So we've created a dynamic range. There it is there, five variables, a lot to remember. What I'm just going to do is copy that so that I can use the same formula with one minor modification to have a dynamic range also for the axis values. The axis values are going to be the, the months. So that now starts in A1, goes down the same number, etc. Alright, so that's the hard bit done. Now we can go ahead and make the graph and, and see what it looks like when we make it dynamic. I'm just going to select any values, it doesn't matter how many you select, and insert a line graph. At the moment what we see is that the data is mapping directly to a section of our table. I don't want that, I want it to map to our dynamic range. So I'm going to right click on the value, click select data, and inside this select data source wizard, I'm going to edit the values. As you can see here, it's referring to B2 to B12. I want to delete that out, keeping the sheet reference, which is the word finished. I'm simply going to type in my dynamic range that I've created. And for the axis, I'm going to just do the same thing. Delete A2 to A12. And write the word dynamic axis. Okay, now what we'll notice is that the graph is now mapping on our selection. So if I change this to 20, there will now be 20 values on the graph. If I change this to April, and now switches to April. I'm going to tidy the graph off to make it look a little bit better. Great. Now I am going to put a spinner button on the graph to just make it a little bit easier to interact with in terms of the amount of values on there. We've done this in a previous video, but this is good reinforcement. Spinner button, just going to place it on the graph. I'm going to right click on it, select format control. The current value, I'm going to say it's 20. The minimum value, let's make sure that there's always six values on the graph. The maximum value is 36 because that's how many rows of data we've got. And the cell link is that cell there. Pardon me. All right, so what we should now see is that if we click this button up or down, it shrinks our range. So that's working great. What I also want to do is use some conditional formatting to make it clear to the users of the system what graph, uh, what the graph is showing, so which data points from the table. So I'm going to select everything except the headings from this table. I'm going to go into my conditional formatting wizard and I'm going to use a formula to write a little bit of a gnarly equation that will highlight the cells that are being graphed. This particular formula has two criteria. The first criteria is that the row number needs to be greater than the start date that we have specified with our drop-down box. So row does exactly what it says is it pulls out the row number that we're currently in. So if I use A2, it knows to apply that to all the rows below it. So that's the first criteria. Is the row number greater than our start date? The second one follows a similar logic Is the row number 
list them. The start month plus the number of months that we've shown. Simply going to make the fill gold for now and let's see what it says. Looks like I've got something a little bit wrong here, but let's see. Yep, made a mistake. So let's just go and edit that. So a little bit of an edit on that formula, and it's now looking good. So what we'll see is as we hit the spinner button, the selection, the gold part of the box, expands and contracts. And if we choose a later part, it all moves down. So the graph looks quite nice. Plenty of application of this type of graph. We could have had a a uh, spinner button to also decide the, the start date rather than the drop down box. Much like a previous example, we could have made a nice custom title. So I'm going to just do that using some of the values here. Yep, that looks okay. reference that cell to the title. Alright, so a little bit more of a useful graph to work with. You've got a start point, an end point that's flexible. You've got the ability to change the title. You can muck around with it with a spinner button. You can format the data series, etc. Make it however you like, but a much more pretty graph and nice to work with. So once again, dynamic range, the key to using this type of graph, you need to use the offset function um, to create the ability to, to flexibly alter uh, graph range. And once you do that, then making a graph and mapping it to those values is, is a relatively simple process and it allows you to create graphs where the user can have input. Thanks for stopping by, I'll see you next trip.